let's finally finish off that proof. Um, we're going to suppose that G is some graph. Um, and let me recall the definitions of the different kind of connectivities that we have. So the, um, the connectivity of the graph, and this is going to be slightly different than how I defined it before, I realized that I didn't quite get the kind of base case exactly correct. But just to be very precise, it's going to be the minimum size of a set, which is um, some subset of all the vertices in the graph, such that if you remove them, um, then this graph is either uh, disconnected or has a single vertex. So that would say, for example, that the connectivity of, well, a single vertex would be zero. The connectivity of a vertex with a couple of loops is also zero. The connectivity of a graph like this would be one. Removing one vertex gives you a graph with just a single vertex, and also that's one as well. Okay, so that's the connectivity. And there's also the edge connectivity of the graph. So there's like the vertex connectivity and the edge connectivity, kappa prime, almost the same, the minimum order of some subset. This time it's going to be a subset of edges, such that if you remove them, um, then the result is either um, disconnected Or trivial. So trivial meaning that you know it has a single vertex and no edges. So for example, the connectivity, the edge connectivity of this graph is actually one. You have to remove an edge to get this thing to be um, to be trivial. And even though the vertex connectivity of that graph, as we saw, is already zero. Okay. So let's now state. Uh, the result. So uh, what I'm going to do is prove a souped up version of what I did last time. And that is that um, the connectivity of, the gra of, of any graph is less than or equal than the edge connectivity. Okay, so um, so the proof is going to work by inducting on the kappa prime, on the edge con connectedness. So induct on kappa prime. So if um, kappa prime is equal to zero, well, what does that say? That says the edge connectivity is zero. That means that Upon deleting no edges, you are either disconnected or trivial. Well, that means that G is either disconnected or trivial. Um, well, but then that implies that it's uh, disconnected or, it, in particular, has just one vertex, which implies that the kappa is equal to zero. So check, we're done with the base case. For the general case, we're going to assume that it's true if the kappa prime is less than some given k, where k is some um, uh, is just some some non-negative number, and we want to then um, consider a graph G such that the edge connectivity is exactly k, and we want to show that the edge connectivity of the graph is less than or equal to k. No, sorry, that the vertex connectivity of the graph is less than or equal to k. Okay, so, um, so what's the idea?
So we have G whose, um, whose uh, edge connectivity, let's say, is K. So we can choose some set S, a collection of, um, of edges, which has exactly K edges, and such that if I remove those, then this is either disconnected or trivial. Now, uh, I, should, I should say, I mean, K, we're, we're assuming that this, um, right, we're assuming that this thing is, um, is, is bigger than zero. So that means we do have, um, you know, we do have at least at least one edge that we need to remove. Okay, so um, now um, let E be such an edge, and what we want to do is consider what happens if I just look at the graph um, with E removed. Okay, so now. If I look at the graph with E removed, then what I know is that the um, is that the edge connectivity of this graph is actually equal to k minus one. I mean, I, I you know the, the the set itself S was minimal, and so I know I can't get away with less than k minus one. And if I remove the remaining elements of S, I'll produce something that's either trivial or disconnected, and so the kappa prime is k minus one. Okay, so the uh, induction hypothesis um, applies, and uh, that tells us that um, that there that um, that there exists some set. What did I call it? Uh, well, let me let me say it like this. That says that what I what I know is that the um, the kappa of g minus e is therefore less than or equal to the kappa prime of g minus e, which is k minus 1. So what that says is that I can find some collection of k minus 1 vertices of g minus e. Of, um, let's say, because it's actually less than or equal to that, of um, at most k minus 1 vertices of g minus e, let's say a collection t, of k minus 1 vertices of g minus e. Of course, the vertices of g minus e are the same as the vertices of g. We've removed an edge, but not no vertices, right? Um, I can find a collection of these things such that if I look at the graph g minus e, and remove those vertices t, then one of two possibilities either has only one vertex or is disconnected. Okay, well, if it has only one vertex, then remember the vertices of, of, um, of g minus e are the same as the vertices of g, so if I can remove these things and, and only have one vertex left, this is a collection of vertices, if I can remove these and only have one vertex left in G minus E, then if I take G and remove those same collection of vertices, this will also have only one vertex left. So let's say if only one, then G minus T has only one. And so by removing this many, um, vertices by removing um, only one vertex by removing the number of things in T vertices I then obtain that G minus T only has at most one vertex so that says that the so in this case we would then conclude that the vertex connectivity of G would be less than or equal to um, the number of things in T and the number of things in T is at most k minus 1. And that's strictly less than k. 
but it's strictly less than k, which is equal to the edge conductivity of G, and so we're done in that case. Okay. So one possibility was that by taking these t things away from G minus E, I only had one vertex left. In that case, we're fine. So without loss of generality, what we can assume without loss of generality can assume that if I look at G minus E minus T, this is a non-trivial disconnected graph. Now, of course, we should keep in mind what we want to prove. We want to show still, we keep it in the background, want to show that the connectivity of the graph is less than or equal to k. We know that the number of things in t is less than or equal to k minus 1. That's how we constructed t. Now, we're going to finish this off by using the fact that we actually proved in the last video uh, by rewriting this as saying what I really have is g minus those vertices um, possibly minus e. So let's say, I mean it's one possibility of course is that the vertices, one of the vertices in t um, was incident to e, in which case when I remove t I also remove e. Um, so maybe this is actually the same as that, or maybe it's actually the same as g minus t minus e. So I guess I should really logically have two possibilities. Let me just um, write them out more clearly. So if e is incident, to a vertex in T, well then guess what? If I look at G minus T, then I've also removed the edge E. That's the same as G minus E minus T. And is disconnected. But that implies that by removing from G this many things, I'm disconnected. And so again, I achieve um, the desired inequality when I'm done. So if E is incident to a vertex in T, then I'm done. Other, so otherwise, then what do I have? If I write G minus E, what I have up here minus T, then I can also think of that as taking G minus T and now, of course, E, not having been incident to any of these vertices, still exists in this graph, and so I can write it like that. So if it wasn't incident to one of those vertices, then, then I have that equality. But what does that say? That says that E, so this is disconnected, right? That says that E is a bridge. G minus T. And what do we know? We know that if you have a bridge, in other words, if you have a cut edge, then what we proved last time is one of two things is true. You either have a cut vertex or you look like a little dumbbell. Okay? So because G minus T has a bridge, then either g minus t is isomorphic to a graph that just looks like that, or g minus t has a um, cut vertex. Now, if g minus t has a cut vertex, say, let's say v, then g minus t union v is disconnected. 
but that says that the edge the, the vertex connectivity of G is therefore less or equal to the order of T union V, which is one uh, at worst one bigger than the size of uh, T. The size of T is no more than K minus one. So that's K, and that's kappa prime of G as we want it. So if G minus T has a cut vertex, then that, and then we're done. And so the only possibility then is that G minus T looks like this dumbbell. But if G minus T looks like the dumbbell, then if I, let's say, call this vertex V right there, then if I look at G minus T minus, uh, let's say, G minus T and also V, then this, uh, this is a graph that consists of a single vertex. And so just as before, that also implies the same statement, that if I remove that vertex, then I've achieved the, the, the vertex connectivity number, right? So that means that this is some set, which if I remove it from my vertices, I will achieve a graph which, has, which is either disconnected or has one vertex, either which way it works, and that gives me that the vertex connectivity is bounded by k in each of those cases. And we're done.